Chasing the stars will stride into the dawn Never back down till the battle is won Face each foe with hearts brave and true Unafraid of the unknown Because I'll face it all with you Hello, I'm the Review Reviewer. You review it, I review you. This is my partner, Mr. It. Today, we'll be looking at the Cinema Wins video on Lightyear. This is a little it's all about the lore and a little don't think about it too much and I really don't know why this wasn't in the trailer. Would have saved Chris a few tweets. Honestly, I think this was the movie's biggest misstep. Lightyear is in no way a movie that would have come out in 1995. It's more the gritty modern reboot of the concept and I can't help but feel like it would have been better received if they leaned into that. Last time Chris Evans emerged from a pod like this, he became an Avenger. He doesn't seem quite as beefy this time. Me, 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 me. The rain seems a bit unstable. Just like Andy's bed. I know a lot of people might find these callbacks frustrating. Those people are no fun. Okay, that musical sting felt mighty close to the arrangement of the first couple notes of You've Got a Friend in Me. I can't prove it, but it's definitely got that Toy Story feel, and I love it. I don't think it was You've Got a Friend in Me, but agreed. It very much felt like it came right out of Toy Story's score. Look, feather, featherings, feather... It's a uh, feathering Imston, sir. Look, rookie. <laughs> Genuinely lulled at this. Feathering Imston. Also, solid Bill Hader cameo as Feathering Imston. Yeah, Bill Hader really seems on his way to become Pixar's new John Ratzenberger. Though I gotta say, his voice is so recognizable that I started to focus on the fact that Feathering Imston basically doesn't show up again. So I thought maybe the big reveal would be that Feathering Imston was Zerg. But it turns out that's not the case, and Feathering Imston was just Feathering Imston. You know, saying his name over and over isn't gonna change the fact that I will forget how it's pronounced the second this video ends. Crystallic fusion is highly unstable. Ah, he's always loved talking about crystallic fusion with his buddies. Still use fossil fuels, or have you discovered crystallic fusion? Gotta love how that was just random techno jargon that had no real thought put into it in Toy Story, and now they're building on it in a fun way. I read somewhere once that supposedly blowing into Nintendo and Sega cartridges did nothing and actually just blew dust in and made it worse? You probably read it on the cartridges themselves, and promptly ignored it. As you should. No, no. I can do it. Also, we get a taste of Buzz's talent, like the real Buzz isn't a dope. The AI is telling him he's screwed, and he does a little beautiful mind math combined with a risky maneuver and saves himself and the ship. Yeah, it's almost as if you need to be a nerd in order to be a real-life astronaut. Ha! The cat is a computer, so of course he comes with a... mouse. I really hate how that was probably intentional. This Buzz also defaults to combat position when scared. In my experience, that's more of a military-slash-police thing than anything else. Being actually trained for combat will more likely turn flight into fight. Wonder if he has a Paso Doble setting as well. Actually, making this buzz bilingual would have been a top tier move. Well, it's Pixar, so you know it's coming, but it's still a gut punch. To paraphrase how Tony Goldmark once put it, Pixar are the masters of ripping your still beating heart out of your ass. Come on, a falling with style button? Wait, but Woody said that. Okay, now I'm confused. Again, this movie really should have been sold as a modern reinvention of the Buzz Lightyear character. Right, so supposedly the film we're watching is the film that Andy from Toy Story was obsessed with, so I love that Buzz is essentially wearing a rebel flight suit. The ship looks pretty close to an X-Wing, and he landed in a swamp area of the planet that looks like Dagobah. Really? Buzz Lightyear media taking from Star Wars? No, Buzz. I am your father. No! You don't say. I love that they really didn't hide what they're saying. I mean, it's clearly Zerg until you know, and then you can hear the buzzerg. Honestly, for most of the movie, I thought they were referring to him as the Zerg. So you're rookies. Oh, boy. We'd love to be rookies. Still building up to that. Optimism. I bet this makes Buzz miss Feathering Imston. Personally, I like this bit more because whether Pixar wants to acknowledge it or not, it's a nice parallel to the original Buzz Lightyear movie, having Buzz learn to rely on his new team of rookies. Oh, I see. I was in the wrong spot. Apologies. I will start over. Even their robot sucks. The team continuity. Not really a team, as they just kind of leave them there for the rest of the movie. Hey, yo, some laugh canisters from Monsters, Inc., which implies they have even more fuel sources. I dread how people try to fit this movie into the Pixar theory. Did... did we just get an orange cone reference to Toy Story 2? Huh. Never actually considered that one. You look good, Buzz. Dad? The dad line is great. Not only did Toy Story 2 set us up to assume that Zerg was Buzz's father, but because it's old Buzz, it's believable for a second. Instead, they continued the homage to... Like a billion sci-fi stories where the hero bumps into a grizzled, perhaps evil, version of themselves from another timeline. But instead of feeling tired, it feels like seeing a band you love cover a song from another band you love. Yeah, I wish more people saw it that way. 
Seriously, I don't get why people hate it on this twist. That's a filthy lie. I know exactly why at least a lot of people hated it. Because it diverged from the original. I could understand if they just did it for the shock value, pulling this concept completely out of their asses for no other reason than messing with expectations, but there is a plot reason for it. Buzz's whole arc in this movie is about him living in the past, and now it's being literal. This kind of thing is exactly why you put a story like this in a sci-fi setting. <gasps> Swiss Army socks. Screw it. Socks is always a win. Eh, I will admit, at this point it felt more like Deus Ex Soxina. This whole sequence is awesome and rivals anything in any blockbuster action movie. And it's from a Pixar film. That is bananas. The sound design, how it cuts out and then blasts back in. Buzz getting his helmet on just before he breaches the force field. Also the small detail of him holding his breath until he knows his helmet is actually on. But I think there's room to expand this universe. We'll have to wait and see. Sadly, I can't help but feel like, at best, it depends on how Toy Story 5 does. And obviously, I wouldn't begrudge them the return of Featheringhamston. Still not gonna remember it. This video's great. While I can't agree with all the points made, it's nice to see this film that, at least feels like it was, pretty panned by audiences, get some due respect.